Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 1971. We're going to be taking a look at Dolly Parton and she's going to be playing through Coat of Many Colours. So let's get Dolly up on screen and see how she gets on. Back through the years I go wondering once again Back to the seasons of my youth And I recall a box of red that someone gave us And how my mama put the rage to use now, There were rags of many colors But every piece was small And I didn't have a coat And it was way down in the fall Mama sewed the rags together so in every piece with love she made my coat of many colors that I was so proud of. And while she sewed she told a story from the Bible she had read about a coat of many colors Joseph wore and then she said, I hope this coat will bring you good luck and happiness and I just couldn't wait to wear it. Mama blessed it with a kiss My coat of many colors that my mama made for me Made only from red, but I wore it so proudly Although we had no money, I was rich as I could be In my coat of many colors, mama made for me have it unfortunately the video does cut out quite abruptly as we could see but I want to mention about Dolly's performance here the technical ability that she shows playing the guitar and this is something that is gonna fly under the radar of so many people unless you play guitar yourself and you play finger style also look at Dolly's nails because this is the one thing that everybody struggles with when they start playing acoustic guitar is holding down the notes fretting the notes onto the fretboard if you've got long nails it will stop you being able to do that, to actually push down onto the fretboard because the nail gets in the way. And Dolly's nails are so long here, you can see how she's adapted her technique in order to fret the notes with a really shallow angle. And what's more impressive is the clarity of the notes that she's getting with that left hand, but also the hammer-ons. Listen to the way that she hammers on to that guitar and gets such a clean sound considering the nails that she's got. So there is so much in here, the right hand picking out the sequences. And when we add in the fact that she's singing at the same time, pitch perfect the whole way through, all of those vocal trills and all of those vocal phrases are totally unaffected by the fact that she is picking with that right hand, having that running bass line sequence with the thumb and the left hand doing the hammer-ons and those chord changes. We even have that key change that goes in there as well when she then changes over to the A. So there is so much going on here on the guitar, but you're totally unaware of it because of the professionalism with which she carries on with her performance and 
the connection that you get with her vocal and the way that she also talks the vocal so you get that connection to the story as well and this is a great song by the way there is so much in there that is story driven this is why I played it the whole way through because you've got to listen to it to listen to the whole story and see exactly what Dolly's saying I think this is one of the songs that she said was the most autobiographical of her career because it was so personal to her and the level of playing means that you can concentrate on that you're not distracted by fretting notes incorrectly any buzzing or it just not being in time there is so much here that is just top-notch playing and singing and if you do play the guitar rewind it back to the beginning and listen to the level of consistency that Dolly achieves throughout this performance because there is nothing in there that you can point at guitar wise technique wise that is anything less than a great performance a perfect performance and when you add in the fact that she's singing at the same time it just makes it even more impressive and this brings me on to another point about musicians in the current era and musicians back in the day because getting your guitar playing up to this point takes a hell of a lot of practice and that's without a vocal over the top and I think a lot of artists nowadays don't spend as long as they should on an instrument so that they can accompany themselves when they sing. Generally, you'll just have strumming of chords and that's it. But as soon as you start playing finger style and having sequences with the right hand, putting in hammer-ons with the left hand, it is now just really upping that technical difficulty. But the players back in the day all seemed to have worked at their playing so much that they could pull it off live and pull it off to an extent where it is a perfect take on their guitar and a perfect vocal take. And this is something that I mention in other performances from around this time. I'm not sure if this is 1971. The song certainly was released then. I'm not sure if this video performance is that year. But back in the 70s, the 80s, they didn't have auto-tune. You could not fake being a great artist because... There was no way of doing it, especially playing the guitar live and singing. You couldn't fake this. And that's why the artists had to learn to play an instrument because there was no way of getting publicity or getting to the top of the charts other than being better than the other artists around at the time. And every other artist could sing and play. So that's what they needed to do. And in Dolly's case, she could sing, she could play, and the way that she got success was being a great songwriter as well. And when I mention about her playing the guitar so impressively and singing at the same time, she started playing the guitar at age seven, and that was a homemade guitar, and at age eight is when she got her first real guitar that her uncle bought her. And at age 10, she appeared on the Kaz Walker show, and at age 13, she recorded Puppy Love, and that was on a small record label, but she also performed on the Grand Ole Opry, and that's where Johnny Cash encouraged her to follow her dream of becoming a musician. So on graduating from high school, Dolly moved to Nashville, and she signed with a publishing company as a songwriter, and she co-wrote songs with her uncle Bill Owens, and she had several tracks that did chart well, and some of her tracks were recorded by Kitty Wells and Hank Williams Jr. And the year after that, 1965, when she was 19, she signed with Monument Records. And the record label saw her as a bubblegum pop singer and just try to release pop songs with her. But she wanted to do country music, but they refused. So the tracks, unfortunately, that she did release didn't make it into the top 100. And in 1966, Dolly wrote Put It Off Until Tomorrow, which was released by Bill Phillips. And that got to number six in the country charts. So it made the record label rethink their theory on not letting Dolly release anything country orientated. So the first track that she released was called Dumb Blonde. And that got to number 27 in the charts. And then Something Fishy, the next track she released, went to number 14 in the charts. And these were both releases on her first album which is called Hello, I'm Dolly. 
And in 1967, she joined up with Porter Wagner on the Porter Wagner Show. And initially, it was difficult because she was filling the shoes of Norma Jean, who had just left that show. But fortunately, everything worked out. And Porter said to his record label, which was RCA Victor at the time, that they had to sign Dolly Parton. And they did. And the first release that the record label did was a duo with Porter as well. So I think they were hedging their bets. They knew that Porter would sell well and added Dolly in there. And it proved that they're right because they got into the top 10 in 1968. And her first solo single release for RCA Victor was called Just Because I'm a Woman. And that got to number 17 in the charts. But the stuff that she was doing with Porter was always doing so much better than her solo stuff. And Porter owned almost half of the publishing company that Dolly and her uncle had set up. So they were becoming frustrated that everything Dolly released didn't do as well as when they sang together. So in 1970, they tried something completely different and released the Jimmy Rogers track, Mule Skinner Blues. And... It was a gimmick. It was something to try and get publicity. And it worked because that got to number three in the charts. And they followed it up immediately by releasing Joshua, which got to number one in the charts. And over the next two years, Dolly would have consistent hits. And this video is an example of one of those hits, Coat of Many Colors in 1971, that got to number four. And in 1973, this I think was a major turning point in Dolly's career because she wrote a track called I Will Always Love You and it was about her professional split with Porter but Elvis Presley wanted to record this track so Colonel Tom Parker approached Dolly and said Elvis is interested in recording this track that you've written can he do it? And he also mentioned that it was common practice for Elvis to get 50% of the publishing rights on any song that he recorded, whether it be a cover, all of his tracks were covers, so it meant that all of those publishing rights, Dolly would have signed away, but she was too smart. And she said to Colonel Tom Parker, no, Elvis is not going to cover my track. And considering what would happen in the future with The Bodyguard, with Whitney Houston, that movie and the soundtrack, it was the wisest choice that Dolly ever made to turn down Elvis and turn down Colonel Tom Parker. And I have seen her mention in interviews about how business savvy her dad was. Even though he was illiterate, he knew exactly how business worked. And you can tell that Dolly picked up on that. And it's something that so many artists fall down on the music industry side of it, the business side, whereas Dolly was so switched on so early on in her career, making sure that she still kept the rights to all of her music. And it's something that I go on about in so many videos about artists and bands. Keep the rights to your music. It's the most important thing. So in 1974, she had three songs that went to number one. Those were I Will Always Love You, Love Is Like a Butterfly and Jolene. And she has stated about how Jolene and I Will Always Love You were both written in the same songwriting session. And she said herself, that was a good night. And in 1976, she had her own TV show called Dolly, but she requested that they ended that show because it was having an effect on her voice because presenting is different to singing. And sometimes she might find that she was shouting in order to be heard and that would damage her vocal cords. And that's not something you want as a singer. So that didn't last particularly long, but throughout the mid 70s, and late 70s, she was still charting highly. And I think in 1977, she then was making a conscious attempt to try and change her sound to appeal to the pop charts as well as the country music charts. So in 1977, Dolly went to pop producer Gary Klein in order to help her get that pop sound with her recordings. And they released Here You Come Again. And that got to number one on the country album charts but more significantly, it got to number 20 on the pop album charts. So it had the desired effect. And the title track from that album, when released as a single, got to number 10 in the pop singles chart. And in 1980, 
1980, her song 9 to 5 did very well, being attributed to the film as well, which she also starred in, because she got to number one in the pop charts, and number one in the country music charts, and number one in the adult contemporary charts. So it meant that she was number one in three separate charts all at the same time. And her duet with Kenny Rogers, Islands in the Stream, that was in 1983, and that was written by the Bee Gees. Barry Gibb produced that track, and throughout the 80s, she still performed solidly in the charts. And at the end of the 80s, well, 1986, is when her record label didn't renew the contract, and that was RCA Records. So in 1987, she signed with Columbia Records, and this is when she teamed up with Linda Ronstadt and Emmy Lou Harris, both of which have got a video on this channel if you want to check them out independently. But they recorded the album Trio, and that was a monster hit. It went to number one for five weeks, and it also won a Grammy. So this really revitalized Dolly's career, in 1987. But then in the 90s, the early 90s is when the sound of country music started to change and it became a little bit more edgy, maybe a bit more modern. And a lot of the old guard of country players and artists, they got left by the wayside. The advantage that Dolly had is that in 1992, they released a film with Whitney Houston called The Bodyguard. And Whitney Houston, of course, sang the title track of that movie, I Will Always Love You, which was Dolly's track that I mentioned earlier that she refused Elvis. And that was why it paid off so much, because it meant that now all the royalties from that movie and from that cover that Whitney Houston did were coming through to Dolly. So that was a massive commercial success. And in 1999, she released the Trio 2 album with Linda and Emmy Lou. And again, that won a Grammy. And she's achieved so much throughout her career that I'm not going to be able to cover it all in this video. But just to mention as well, in 2008, her album album called Backwoods Barbie that charted in her highest position in the all genre chart and that got to number 17 and in 2014 her Blue Smoke album got to number 6 in the album charts and that's her highest charting solo album it also got to number 2 here in the UK charts and that was the same year that she performed in front of 180,000 people at Glastonbury and it's going to be impossible for me to mention everything that Dolly has achieved but just to throw a few numbers at you 25 number 1 singles 41 albums that have got into the top 10 that's a record for any artist 110 singles that have charted she's been nominated for 47 grammy awards she's won nine grammy awards she's in the country music hall of fame obviously and as you can tell from this video such a well-rounded artist great guitar player great singer great business person as well let's mention that but also a fantastic songwriter she's written over 3,000 songs as we could see it written in the video but thank you so much for suggesting this video for me to take a look at and keep those suggestions coming in the comments below let me know what you guys think and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and i'll see you guys at the next one Bro.